Hello, my name is David Giles of Hitex Development Tools and this is a short presentation on Development Assistant for C and I will be covering some of the features within the tool including symbol searching, flow charting and generating metrics. This Development Assistant for C module assumes that you've already watched the overview video and that you know how to create a project and add the C source files and the header files to that project. If we come uh, back into the project again, we have the project route which is detailed here and I have two folders uh, which contain files. This one is the header files for my particular project and this one here is all the source file uh, projects. We can analyze the symbols by coming up into the start menu and clicking on build database um, and as you can see here we've analyzed 101,000 lines of code uh, with only one error in it. Uh, this was detailed in the first presentation the overview presentation uh, but now we're going to show you a few more features which development assistant for C has available for it. If I pick on one of the uh, the files I have a quite a complicated file here called uh, portstructure.c um, if I come into this panel on the right hand side and right click the mouse button you'll see a list of all of the functions which are available within this particular C source file. Uh, what Development System for C allows us to do is to just uh, quickly click uh, on one of the uh, function names and uh, the, the mouse cursor moves immediately to that point within the, the files. Again I can right click, I can come into uh, Setup Ports Default and again we can see the code uh, in here as well. What Development Assistant uh, for C um, also has is it has some form of um, structured highlighting. As you can see here the text has been highlighted in yellow to make it more readable. As you can see where we have an if statement uh, we have a collection of statements and these have been grouped together by this uh, vertical line which you see here. So I can see very clearly that the if this if statement here corresponds to all of this uh, code here and similarly I have another if statement here. If this is a little confusing for you, it's not a problem, we can actually turn that off just by clicking on um, this button here. You can see that there's uh, quite a lot of code that's associated with this function. We have lots of ifs and lots of else. Um, and if somebody else has written this software, um, then sometimes it's a little bit uh, tricky to follow the, the thinking that's uh, behind the software engineer that's authored the code. Uh, so quite often it's better to kind of have a graphical overview, a flowchart overview as to kind of what this function is actually doing. Now if I just rearrange the screen slightly to give myself a little bit more uh, room. Uh, again I can come back uh, onto here, I can switch the structured highlighting um, on again. But just to the left hand side of this I have a little icon which I can press which is called flowchart. Um, now you can see here on the uh, right hand side um, but you can see that I have the automatically generated flowchart that represents the, the code which I've just shown you. So for example if I uh, click on this if statement here in this left hand panel and um, the C source code that corresponds to this if statement uh, is highlighted. Similarly if I come down into this block of code here, pin function select um, and as we can see this uh, section of code corresponds to th this section on the uh, flowchart. Um, what Development Assistant for C does do um, is it picks out the comments that you've um, put within your C source code and it uses those to graphically represent uh, the software. So for example here, read existing register. If I scroll across there will be a comment there which says read existing register. And this is particularly useful if you're having to manage uh, legacy code which has been authored by uh, somebody other than uh, yourself. Development Assistant for C can also help you find um, symbols and variables within your code. Uh, for example here I have uh, temp32 as a variable. If I double click um, the variable then it, it's highlighted automatically by DAC and if I then use the right hand mouse button I have uh, several options. So here for example if I want to find the definition for this particular variable temp32 I'll just click on uh, definition and it automatically takes uh, it to me. Um, as you can see here temp32 is a local variable which has been uh, used within um, this particular function. I can also find out a little bit more about temp32 variable um, as well. If I uh, right click and bring up the menu options again I can come into uses and as you can see here there's some little snippets of code where that's actually um, used. So I can click on one of these uh, which is say this one here 
and development assistant for C automatically takes me to that variable. This is particularly useful if uh, you maybe change the name of a variable and you need to find all the occurrences um, or if uh, you actually change uh, the, the meaning or behavior of what that um, variable does. Just like for variables, I can use the same features with uh, function names as well. So if I uh, highlight uh, configure port and I do right click and go into uh, declarations, uh, you can see here that all the times uh, where that function is declared uh, is made available to me. So if I click on this one here, you can see it takes me to the header file where I have it defined as an external. And also uh, I have another line here, which is the function prototype at the top of the um, top of the file. And uh, lastly, back to where I started, where I actually have the use of the function um, itself defined. We also have uh, some helper icons on the uh, the toolbar um, at the top here, uh, which basically brings up the uh, similar features to what you've um, just seen. So if I highlight uh, temp32 uh, here, and then come up into this um, icon uh, on the toolbar, uh, for definition. If I click on the, the definition uh, you can see that the cursor is immediately moved uh, to the line where the definition um, actually is. Uh, similarly for the other ones uh, we have uh, declarations uh, uses of. So if I click on the uses of then we have a file containing all the references to that particular function just like we had uh, before when I used the right click um, option. Uh, some of the other uh, things which we have we've got uh, calls to, calls within, uh, uses within um, and uh, also for this particular module if we just were interested in looking at global uh, functions generally I can click on this little icon um, and you can see these are all the global functions which are available uh, within this particular project uh, we also have um, global variables global constants global types and uh, global macros and again you can just simply come down and click on them um, and you can see where they're actually in this case um, uh, the type defined is actually uh, defined so if I want to do some kind of uh, quality analysis of the software I can actually turn on something called uh, metrics and this is relatively simple to do you go into the options box and then you come down to analysis for software metrics and there's a little icon here which says generate software metrics so what I'll do is I'll just highlight all of the, um, the metrics so as you can see here within the software metrics uh, analysis um, box that there are four tabs a generals tab a weight tabs a modules tabs and a function tabs and each of these of these uh, controls some of the aspects um, that we're looking to um, to measure I'll leave these in the default settings uh, for now and I click on um, OK so I then come back into start and uh, rebuild the database and now you'll notice that in addition to generating information on the symbols it's now generating some software metrics for me and these basically pop up in uh, another tab which you see down at the bottom uh, so for example here if I pick on uh, one too many lines so for this particular test module uh, which is quite a large file according to the parameters which are set up uh, within the metrics it's telling me um, that this um, file has too many lines within it um, you can set whatever limits that you want by going back into those menu options but I'll just leave that um, for now. That port structure uh, file which um, uh, we was looking at earlier uh, is quite a complicated file. There's uh, set over 75 functions in there so this could be quite useful for us uh, to look at from a, a metrics point of view. So to get um, some additional information on this particular C source file um, we can create a report um, for it. So I come up into uh, metrics, add a report and as you can see here we have um, some information relating to that particular um, function um, or rather that particular C source file. If we kind of have a look at it in a um, table format um, it will be a little bit easier uh, to read initially. Uh, so uh, and we can see here that we have a file and it's called portstructure.c and uh, the number of comments uh, within that line uh, within that file is 25% uh, so 25% of all the lines uh, have comments associated with them 
Um, this is because we have the, this comment section uh, uh, here highlighted, but I can go down through here. So executable lines, uh, for example, 29.2% of the lines within portstructure.c is actually executable. Um, so you can use these metrics to work out whether maybe your code is not correctly uh, documented enough. You know, it may well be that uh, you will require that uh, every fifth line to be uh, commented, for example. Um, similarly for functions and global variables we have a series of metrics which is available for us for the whole of the module. Um, if we highlight this function radio icon this gets a little bit more interesting for us because you can see the 75 uh, functions which I had within that one C source module uh, are now uh, uh, available to me to view within here. Um, so, for example, we have comment only lines, so configure um, port underscore p naught, um, 61% um, of, of uh, that particular function uh, contains uh, comment only lines. So we have a lot, a lot of comments to code uh, ratio within there. And we can look at uh, things like, um, we can look at some of the more uh, interesting things. Uh, there's something called Halstead uh, difficulty, which gives you some indication as to the, the complexity of the function. You can see a higher number uh, indicates that the uh, the function is more complicated, and a lower number indicates that it's more simple. But the good thing is, of course, is that we can sort uh, these functions by this um, figure. So I can immediately see that configure port is by far the most difficult um, of the uh, of the functions which I've generated. And similarly, down at the bottom, um, I can see configure port zero uh, is the, is the least complicated. So if I wanted to focus my testing, uh, then maybe I should focus my testing on those functions, uh, which uh, through their very nature means that uh, there may be inherently buggy. Uh, similarly, uh, there's other parameters which I can turn on. We've got um, Halstead intelligence uh, content, Halstead uh, language level, and again I can do uh, a search um, or rather do a, a sort by complexity as well. So again configure port 0 um, has a, a Halstead uh, intelligence uh, content uh, above um, port 1 and port 2 and so forth. Um, similarly um, programming effort, uh, configure port, you can see here you got, uh, some metrics relating to the programming effort um, of the particular uh, function. Uh, jump statements, uh, again you can kind of uh, have a look through here. Uh, there's no jump statements used in any of the code. Uh, similarly for uh, maximum depth, so we can uh, have a look at um, how many uh, either function calls or if if statements, if else statements that we have, and again I can sort to see which one's the most complicated configure port. I can double click on configure port that brings me out of the metrics uh, into here, and again I can uh, um, bring up the uh, the flow charts just to kind of see uh, the kind of depth which I'm um, uh, which I'm going down to. As you can see, there's a lot of uh, if else statements contained uh, within there. In addition to just highlighting one particular C file. Um, I can actually highlight several functions and I can generate the metrics um, on these. So if I do right click uh, metrics, uh, you can see now uh, that in addition to uh, the functions that's contained within portstructure.c, um, this report now contains uh, the functions which are contained within more than one C source file. For those customers in UK and Ireland, you can find additional information on the Hitex website www.hitex.co.uk or please contact myself David Giles on djiles at hitex.co.uk For other regions, please contact my colleague Frank Buchner on frank.buchner at hitex.de